love, more joy, everything. It's inspired young people. Inspiration comes from within you. When you clear out the garbage that's in your mind, you then create space for something better, more beautiful to come in. Let's have life and have it more abundantly. I say yes. It's like taking a workshop. I get to be in my pajamas. We have a very active imagination, which is why it's important to learn how to harness it and then point it in the direction you want to go. I listen to your show every day. It's time now for Living Your Inspired Life with Susan Burrell. Susan is no-nonsense, inspirational, motivational, and fun. This is positive talk radio. Practical wisdom for everyday life. It's a gift you give yourself. Now, here's Susan. And welcome to Living Your Inspired Life. You're listening to News Talk 1590 KVTA. And I'm Susan Burrell. We are always in the mode of searching and seeking for people that inspire us in our lives. And if that's what you're looking for as you're listening to this, I invite you at any point uh, during your next week to go to the website, livingyourinspiredlife.org, and check out the amazing conversations we've been having with people that are just really living their lives the way they wanted to, the way they they're inspired to. So livingyourinspiredlife.org. And along those lines, today I have a guest in studio with me. This this young woman has been walking an amazing journey and has fa- in fact written, researched and written a book called Walking in the Master's Footsteps. So I want to welcome Renit Gabay. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You're so welcome. So uh, your book... Well, okay, first of all, I just want to let everybody know that Ranit knows from what she's talking about because she was a cum laude graduate from, what? what's the name of the college? It's David Yelin College in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, and you, ha- you studied, you majored in Bible studies and history, and I imagine that that's also what inspired this book, Walking in the Master's Footsteps. Yes, I, I always had a craving for spirituality. And in fact, it was so so interesting how it actually came about because my family adopted basically Orthodox religion. We grew up secular and all of a sudden they changed their lifestyle and adopted into religious um, environment. And all of a sudden I started observing their lifestyle and realizing that I am asking the same questions, but not because I want to be part of it, but because I want to understand that. And that's what really motivated me to go into the college and, and seek the answers that for the question that I didn't accept or 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 absorbed from my surrounding. Oh, that's fascinating because um, because what you're talking about and in this book talks about it. You're talking about following your own inner journey. That is a, for each of us is a spiritual journey, and as opposed to being part of an orthodox religion. And this book. You research the four uh, founding fathers, if you will, the four uh, people that inspired the four world religions that most everybody knows about, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And that is what I appreciate because there's stories in here that you tell from your research that I didn't know about, especially about Muhammad. I just, I've only done a cursory thing. But I thought because of the holidays coming, what a great opportunity for people to get your book walking in the footsteps of the masters and begin to understand all of kind of why why we seek yeah yes um so it really it's it's not just about the journey of religion it's really about the journey of the great masters about what they were seeking throughout their life and and through their experience how we are can how can we relate to this experience and really understand our own journey based on those experiences? Mm-hmm. So in a way, it's kind of bridging the spirituality, the, 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 the needs for seeking um, of an inner truth um, with, with the journey that document through world religion, um, b- but focus on the journey of the great masters, Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, and Moses. So, uh, Okay, I just have three different things going through my head as you were just speaking. So really, this is about th- this book and what you are now giving uh, workshops on is how each of us individually 
first of all, to make people aware we are already on that path anyway, and then how to individually uh, come to what our inner truth is and then live our lives by that, because that's been your process, right? Yes, it's it's awakening into our own inner truth. And and quite honestly, um, when, when I started to approach that, I... I said, wait a minute, what, what do you mean truth? Truth, it means that it basically, in the religious, introduces us to collective truth. So mm. basically, we're all thinking the same way. But when I started this journey with the masters, I started realizing that each one of us has a, um, co- a, an individual truth. And when we started becoming aware of that inner truth, we started becoming aware of our dharma, our, our natural state of mind, and how this life can be aligned with that, with that truth. And that's the, exactly what I, I've seen throughout this journey with the masters. And when I related that to my own experience, I really said, wow, this is really a process. And that's what really was fascinating to, to, um, to immerse into. I want to read a quote from your book, if you, if you will allow me, mm-hmm. Renit, um, c- because it's about this, this journey of truth. And you say, seeking the truth is a long journey. Hello, believe me, I'm raising <laughs> my hand. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to start over. Seeking the truth is a long journey, starting from the process of questioning and exploring life beyond our own backyard and accepting changes. Hoy. When we are finally ready to break free, we are able to question the values that do not make sense, gradually seeking the direction of our own soul. That, that to me, uh, that's my specific journey I've been on right there, is breaking free, accepting change, and then seeking, you know, what is it that I really want to live and, um, and express? Mm-hmm. Yes. So basically, the breaking through is actually the first steps of this in of this journey is really going forth. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yes, I love that one. <laughs> because basically, what we we're all being taught what to believe, we are all being taught what values are really, uh, we need to embrace in our life. And we're really controlled by this value. Um, and, and when we start to understanding that we need to question this value in order to either accept or rejecting them, then we start realizing that we we can we don't have to take things for granted we really get to connect to who we really are not based on what we were told but based on our own choice and we start to liberating ourselves from what we are being told and from the right way or to the wrong way we start really getting more in touch with what makes sense to us as an individual and that's really the process that takes you from 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 the from the value that you were that we all not even questioning and, and all of a sudden connecting you to your to your to yourself. In fact, is one of my favorite quotes from the book is the further you go f- from home, the nearer you get to your true self. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like that. Well, it's interesting to me because I notice that there are people in the world like you and I that go on these quests or questings, you know, because I don't think it ever ends. And then there's other people that, like you're describing, that are, they just say, okay, if that's what the big guy there standing in front of me is telling me I should believe, I'm going to believe it because, oh my gosh, (laughs) because the Bible says it's so, or because this sacred book says it's so. And so then there's no, there's almost like a giving up of their, of your, I mean, Uh, Now I'm making assumptions for people. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. But there is almost a giving up of your sacred freedom because you're going to believe what somebody else is telling you and you're going to practice it the way they tell you to as opposed to what feels organic and authentic to yourself. Yes, and and quite honestly, it's pretty similar to even the process that raising a teenager in the house, you know? (laughs) (laughs) You know, like their children, as a children, they accept the rules in the house. And then one day they get up and they say, well, that doesn't make sense to me. So it's pretty a natural process for us to start questioning. Because the the, when the beginning, the process of of questioning, we become more aware of, of, okay, this is if it doesn't make sense to me it doesn't resonate with me i don't have to accept it i don't have to agree with that then it it really led me to a a journey it's a jump stop that led me on a journey of understanding my own my own my own values 
and and stepping into it and embracing it so the more we questioning our our values even not just by told that was were told by leaders but also by our own parents by our own friends and in uh, and, and social expectations that we raised on we have to really um question them in order to um understand our own our own value our own truth yeah well and i find that it's not even when I mean, teenagers are the most dramatic place where where the individual goes, no, I'm, I'm not doing what you say anymore. I'm not, I don't believe it. I'm going to do the exact opposite sometimes. But I also see that with people that are hitting their, their decade marks, like 40, 50. They you know, all of a sudden wake up. Many of us wake up in those middle ages, yikes, and go... Uh, okay, I just lived my life like this up until now, but that's not really who I want to be anymore. I've, I've, I've grown up. I've, I've evolved past that. Now who am I and what do I want to do? And that often drives people into the um, dark night of the soul journey as well, right? And that's still a go- going forth. Yeah? Yes, yes. Going forth is really the jump start that really allowed, uh, allowing us to break free and, and, and start that process. But we continue that process um, go- by... by um, continue to asking what is right for us, what experience, because as we living out, um, living their home surrounding and going out and explore the world, we start to uh, embrace different mindset. We start to expose ourselves to more values and more experiences that transforming our values. So now the, the value that we used to believe before, they are shifting, they're taking by they're reforming through the the the, the new exposure to new experiences mm-hmm. and as you experience these new things i can uh, i can even bring some experiences from my own story because when i moved here to america i'm originally from israel um one of the things that i noticed that everything everywhere i go there is a lot of drive through um um fast food drive through and um bank drive through which I never seen before. And all of a sudden I start realizing, wait a minute, what is that? What is what value is behind all of this? And when I realize that here in America people value time and time is money. And 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 it's a very much a country that that value career and motivating motivating people to be a hard laborer and and there is five days a week but there are very long days where in Israel we used to have more of a of a very slow pace of day which um, everyone from two to to four actually going home not for ma- not so much for a siesta but more to feed the kids that coming home and welcome them from school and have oh my a gosh, family I gathering love that. so the question is what resonates with you yeah you know, there I, is no right or wrong. Man, I want that. <laughs> I do. Yes, I know that's that sounds more of um manageable. Yeah, it does, and more uh and more connected to to your your heart source and your family. Yeah. So in going forth, you talk about resistance. Can we talk a little bit about that? That is Absolutely. the resistance the thing that 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 you're fighting against. Oh, I, tell me what it is. Okay. Can I talk a little <laughs> bit about the masters? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I, I like to illustrate it with, with anecdotes from the book and from this master's journey. So, for example, we're talking about the master of Jesus who um, who was raised in a Jewish surrounding. And he is Jewish. He was Jewish. Um, and, and therefore, the Jewish law is based on the foundation of an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It's based on the... F- it sounds so painful. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and and Jesus basically did not agree with this logic because through his own actions of resistance, we know that he didn't accept the fact that people deserve what uh, people can um, can have what they de- what they deserve. They he didn't accept that people that sinners could be need, need to be punished. He he really wants to create a measurement of compassion and love. It doesn't really help you if you are punishing somebody, but if you teach him a lesson and give him a second chance, he will learn from it. He will shift, and you will gain some kind of point of being compassionate and loving and allowing yourself to um, help somebody individual to grow and evolve. So, 
the fact that he stepped into the place and says we don't have to do what requires by law, but we by law, but we actually can walk the extra mile. The fact that he was able to to expand out of um, and act from from his heart and not necessarily from because of the law of be, or 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 because um, of of you know what you d- you deserve what you are right, doing and the social expectation of all of that right and breaking. Through his action, he expressing his own resistance to the mindset and the values that that ah. was surrounded around uh-huh. um, uh, the 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 concept of measurement of law. So it's not like he was against the law, but he wants to do way more than what the law required and do things that was really aligned with their hearts. So therefore, the the step, the, the awareness, the awakening into love and compassion come through his experiences of resistance, through conflict with with the community that resist his um, his mindset that was out 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 heard of. Nobody ever heard about that concept before. So obviously, when you change the mindset, when you change the value in your surrounding, you create resistance with somebody, with people that don't accept that, because they're not in the same place that you are. But yet the resistance that come through the conflicts and reflect through the actions of resistance are are the signs, are the clues that really allow you to get more in touch with what with the core value of what you really believe in or what you're what you're wa- awakening to that that you believe in yeah yes so so this is applicable not only to our spiritual uh lives or whatever but i just want everybody to know this is applicable when you're in relationship with another human being this is applicable this this law of resistance or this idea of resistance let's make it an idea not a law uh it it happens in when you're in a job that you are feeling that you're getting less and less money get paid to you for all your valiant efforts it 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 reaches out into all sorts of areas not just a, a religious spiritual i'm going to resist my spiritual upbringing my religious upbringing because this is it is it's true you know people I, the clients that I work with often they come to me because some they're not happy with something in their life and generally it's because they're resisting their truth and the truth is I'm done with this job you know or I'm done with this marriage or I'm done with this friendship or whatever it is and I'm instead of instead of making the choice to go forth I'm making the choice to be miserable Yes, and and quite honestly, one of the the tools that I love to play with is conflict. Who doesn't have conflict with their life, right? Right. So conflict, when you look at that, it's really not about crisis or 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 emotional hurt. It's really a, a tool to teach us what we're resisting of. Because when we conf- we when we compare what we believe in compared to the person that we are in conflict and realizing that the person we are in conflict has a different values and he believes in different things that we believe in we start realizing that the conflict is 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 a, a tool for us to awaken into our, our truth it reflect to us what we believe in because it's it's reflected through the opposite um person that comes to your life and shows you hello if you really don't want that, then you you need to do something about it. You, you need to change. You need to change, yeah. You know, as, as you're sharing that, it reminds me, when I was younger, I, I grew up in a very... Um, uh, my, my, my parents, my family is a political belief system of a certain kind. Very strong. That, that you know, that party, that, that political party is the one and only and right. And when I got out in the world and I started, you know, meeting other people that had a different belief system about politics, I would feel conflicted. And but what happened is I began to then listen because I wanted to learn if if I if it didn't if I was feeling conflicted, like you're saying, it made me think that there's something else I needed to understand in order then to say, okay, yeah, I agree with my folks or no, I don't agree with my folks. And 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 it's kind of like that. Right. Yes, the the when you are, uh, well, there the, there is a conflict that we observe that we can listen and say, wait, can we resonate with that? And if we we're not, 
why we're not resonate with that. So that's that's the kind of conflict that you pointed out. But we also have the kind of conflict that we actually have with another human being. And most of the times that's the kind of in, even a karmic conflict that we have with somebody like in the family, like a husband or 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 a parents or or a brother. Um, and I'm sure that everybody can understand that and relate to that, right? But when we start realizing that this conflict, there is no coincidence why we have this conflict because that conflict is start to awaken us awakening us into what directions does not if that doesn't fit our personality if that doesn't fit our life if that doesn't fit the point of view that we are trying to live by then it there must be a different path that we need to walk through and that's what this conflict is really represented really giving you an opportunity to see what directions you need to go. And sometimes the what, the weirdest thing is that sometimes that this same kind of conflict appeared with different kind of people. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, that's a big sign there, right? You there know, you hello, go. You got to pay attention exactly. to that. Exactly. Exactly. So let's talk more about the the process of the journey of the of what you've written about in the book because at because of the conflict or the resistance, right? Then then your next segment is talking about looking inward. Yes. And 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 that's part of what you're discussing right now is is looking inward to discern what your uh, or core value is, what how you want to live your life. Yes. So looking inward, the whole the whole concept is about a, um, a, a journey of self discovery. We discovering ourselves because up until now we are being told how to um, how who we are. And I love I love the metaphor of this of the swan because I love the story of the ugly duckling that that every time that he tried to live by a different definition, um, he failed and um, to deliver the social expectation. But then when he jump in the water and he start to see his own reflection. All of a sudden, he didn't have to be told who he is. All he needs to do is to look within and, and discover that essence. So basically, looking inward is giving you an opportunity to review your life experiences and look at them in a way that you can pull information and see exactly who you truly are. And, and that, informa- that, that kind of process is coming from um, reviewing your experience and seeing what resonates with you and what doesn't. And, seeing, and, and taking the chance of going beyond the, the, what's familiar to you and explore a different surrounding and see what, like if you go into a, to a college in a different state, that's a great opportunity to see what's out there and why this state is, um, this, the lifestyle that, that I'm exposing into, what is it, what kind of, um, what kind of information and values it brings me and how does it shift my mindset and how does it takes me to a different journey and and what happened to a lot of people when they go on that journey and they and um and they stay in the same state that they decided to that they went to college to why because they resonate with their lifestyle with mm-hmm. they resonate uh-huh. with the values so it start to it start allow uh, it, they start to allow themselves to transform by their new experiences and shift through it to a different mindset that they used to be in the first in in the original place. And, and I got to add the word hopefully. Yes, hopefully, <laughs> because I, I don't know that everyone is a, is a seeker like you and I, Ronit. I, I think that there are some people that are like just comfy cozy in their own little comfort zone. That's true. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I love, and which is why I love having people like you on on Living Your Inspired Life, is this dynamic conversation of the, okay, so what if, and what what else do I want to learn about myself, and how else do I want to live? So in the book, you also talk about that uh, the masters had directions or signs along their uh, along their way. Will you share a couple of antidotes about that? Yes, absolutely. So the way I look at that, um, I, I look at the... the our life experiences is, is like the forest, the forest of the unknown that we are Ooh. walking towards something that we don't know and um, and it's pretty scary. And yet the universe is always guiding us through these experiences. So the masters is, is, 
through the experience of the masters, I know uh, I can give you example about Moses, for example, when he was um, living in Egypt and he didn't agree with the policy of discriminations um, and um, and unjust, and and he left Egypt because he felt um, that that this is not the place that he can live peacefully because he is in constant conflict with the way the things are. So he left Egypt and he sat at the um, at the well. In, in the, at the desert, and all of a sudden he observed there was seven beautiful girls coming to the wells and pull some water, and um, and he's sitting down and meditate and observe the beautiful girls, and all of a sudden three boys, she- three shepherd boys, are coming and taking their bucket of water. After, and this is a very hard labor to pull the, way, the water from the from the wells. So he noticed that the, the boys are taking advantage of the girls, and they take the bucket and they water their camel. So Moses cannot bear another another situation that people taking advantage of other people. So he goes in there and he's helping the girls and chasing the, the boys out of there and helping them to pull the water from the well. And, and eventually the girls are going home and tell their fathers, their father asking them, why are you home early? I mean, normally it takes you a couple of hours to do that. And they said, oh, there, there is an Egyptian boy there uh, near the well that help us to get the work done and we finish early and we came back and he says where so where is this boy and they said well he he's staying there the, at, at the, the near the well so they he's asking the girls to go and bring the, the guest home and honor him with a really nice dinner and Moses didn't have a place to go because all he knew is that he left Egypt and he didn't know where to go. But the minute that he left and he was ready to let go, the next door is opened up and yeah. led him to this family whom he became a member. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So that's the that's the sign, yeah? That was absolutely a sign. Not only that was a good sign, I mean, a, a good door to open up, and it was it letting him into the family of the priest of uh, of Midian, which happened to be the one, um, he was the leader of the tribe. So he was the, he was doing uh, the consultation and he was the one who judged in case of, of, of any social situation. So Moses learned from his father-in-law how to be a good role model. And therefore, that not only that he was led into a safe home environment, but he also led into a place where he could observe and learn how to be a good leader. So he would come back to Egypt with what he learned, with the wisdom that he gained, and develop tools to be a much better leader and eventually lead the people to lead the slave to freedom. So the clo- the, the doors that open up always leading us forward to where we needed to go. That makes a lot of sense to me. And sometimes it's hard to see that there is doors that yes. are opening. Yes. I have more. Do you want to yeah, share, tell me, share more? Tell me another. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love this story about the Buddha and, and um and the three the the three uh, people that he observed one day he asked to go um to leave his palace and and every time that he end up going to uh, outside to the park he noticed there was a, a sign of suffering that revealed to him every time that he goes so the first time he goes and see the old man the second time he goes and see a pale sick man leaning on somebody else and and he started realizing oh my god i didn't see so much pain and suffering in my entire life and in the last couple of months i've seen a lot of it and then third time there was um, a funeral in the park and everybody's screaming and yelling and He's becoming more and more aware of that that his way of living is 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 contradicting the the authentic life of suffering. So all of a sudden he's awakening into the idea that there is suffering and there is something that we must we must we must do in order to alleviate um, to liberate ourselves from suffering. So that three signs is something significant that I um, that I always pointed out to people and says when things are happening assigned uh, in in number three then you know oh, yeah <laughs> in, you need to pay attention to that yeah yeah I agree I totally agree that's I didn't even think about the three signs <laughs> <laughs> uh Renit, we what's the next I want to tap one more thing before sure. we go for break and the next thing is about reprogramming in, in your book so what's the reprogramming because this is kind of off of what you were just saying, there's a 
we have to reimagine ourselves or what what is it Okay, so before I, I'm just forgive me because no, before before we get into the programming, um, the f- the first three steps that we talked about they're all about seeking inner truth. They're all about connecting to your core value and understanding who you are, um, based in getting a, a, a getting more in touch with who you are. But when the programming process is starting a process of transformation, which what I called an inner process of transformation, because on the outside nothing really happened, but on the inside there is a lot of things happening. The things that are start we start to process a lot of information. So the programming basically means that we are start to shift away from the value that we are we programmed to believe in and start to step away into the, the, the value that we absorb through our new experiences. So now we are in a place that our, all ident- our old identity is, uh, is already no longer exists because we don't believe in the old value and we still don't have new value. So we are in a phase of transformation that it's still not formulating. Yeah. So kind of in the gap in between. Yes. In between. Yes. Wow. I'm loving this conversation, Ronit. I'm talking to Ronit Gabay, and the book is called Walking in the Footsteps of the Masters. And we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back with Living Your Inspired Life. Hi, this is Susan Burrell from Living Your Inspired Life. I always find it easier and more fun to expand my life by being connected to open-hearted, like-minded people committed to being on the same path I am. If you feel the same way, I suggest you visit a Center for Spiritual Living. There are wonderful communities in Ventura, Ojai, Santa Barbara, Oxnard, Pleasant Valley, Camarillo, and Westlake Village. You'll find terrific people, great information, and more tools to help you live the life you were born to live. So go to CSL.org to find a center near you. That's CSL.org for a center near you. Welcome back to Living Your Inspired Life. I'm Susan Burrell, and we are talking with Ronique Gabay. Oh, I said it wrong. Goodbye. <laughs> like goodbye. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ronique. And the book is called Walking in the Footsteps of the Masters. But before we go further with this uh, conversation, I want to let everybody know that you are doing two workshops. One is this afternoon at the Camarillo Center for Spiritual Living at... 340 Mobile Avenue from 1 to 3. And the other one is at Westlake Center for Spiritual Living on Sunday, December 14th, starting at 1230. And both of these workshops are um, based on on your book. And, and you you walk th- people through the process. Is that correct? Yes, yes. The, walking through the seven steps that we're talking about today. But I'm also going to give a little bit of tools and see how how you can actually absorb the same information that um, in, in how you can actually start thinking about the question of what is the core value that create your experiences? I love that because um, as we were talking earlier in the show, the, the how kept coming up in the back of my mind. OK, <laughs> but how do you do that? So if you're if you've got a how going on in your head. Go and see uh, Ronit and take one of these workshops, either at the Camarillo Center for Spiritual Living today from 1 to 3, or on Sunday, December 14th at the Westlake Center for Spiritual Living at 1230. And you have something else that's happening really briefly. Yes, I also have a book signing in Granada Bookstores in Santa Barbara on November 20th, and that is 6 o'clock in the, uh, in the evening, and it's um, in, uh, in State Street. On State Street at yes. the Granada Books. Gr- Granada Bookstore. Granada yeah. Bookstore. You're a busy lady. I know, right? I know, and you <laughs> and you came here today too. So we're we've been having the conversation about um, the process of transformation. Yeah. Yes. And so, and we were just talking about going inward and all of those things and discerning what your core values are. But then the next piece that um, I want to dig into is this idea of reprogramming and 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 we just before break we said there's the you said that there's the place where um the the old self has to die we no longer believe in what whatever it was we believed in up until now but yet we don't know exactly what it is we're gonna be living right right can i read another quote from your book of course okay 
The shift into the new life happens through a process of reprogramming our thoughts and changing of values. By letting go of the old thinking patterns and values, we are making room for a new way of life. And you go on to say, Ranit, the masters did exactly that when they gave up on their old values and beliefs that caused chaos crisis and were insufficient in resolving new circumstances. The masters were able to shift their thinking and create alternative values that would replace the old and broken beliefs. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Your turn. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So, you know, once we start realizing that, um, that the, 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 the broken situation um, that happens in 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 the place that they used to live, like like Moses, so n- witnessed of the discrimination and witnessed abuse towards uh, towards people in general, not just towards slaves, um, and and he started realizing that that's not his ideal way of living but he could not do anything because every time that he tried to stop it nothing no nobody really cooperate or encourage him nobody really he got in big trouble too yes exactly so how do you really express that if you don't if you don't have any power to express that Mm -hmm. and in fact the fact that he actually walked away from it and took his time to reflect and 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 start to shift into a place that he actually found peace in Midian because in, and it's not like in Midian they, they 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 had a perfect society with no crimes and no no conflict, uh, but there was there was a way of of resolving them. And the more he ex, ex, he experienced um, to a way to resolve the situation, the more the light bulb started to come up and all of a sudden you start realizing, oh my God, I see that that situation come, um, the situation of, of an argument coming over and over again. That means that if we create um, a law that established the, the guideline, then we are not going to create, we are not going to attract the situation over again. So all of a sudden he started creating a solution. All of a sudden this, uh, the he stopped to st- he started to step into uh, his awareness. There is a way to go about it. There is a way to resolve the situation. And what basically what I'm trying to say, I'm sorry, I'm laughing because when you said there's a way to resolve the situation, then I just thought of all the plagues he brought down on Egypt. <laughs> and I'm thinking, was that resolving the situation? I don't know. But I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so yeah, the, the, basically what I'm saying that if we are resolving the situation in our own life in our own personal life Mm -hmm. we are able to inspire other people to resolve them but Mm -hmm. uh, the solution start from starts with us yes looking within and that's really what this karma is all about okay speak to that well it's all about uh, how we understanding our own life lesson and how this life lesson is really motivating us to offer the solution to other people so when we start un- um, when we start understanding how we can resolve that, we finally have the wisdom to offer it to somebody else. Ah, so so it sounds like s- part of this process that you were in in your own personal life, and then inspired mm-hmm. to research with researching all these masters, is is not only about what is your inner truth, but then how can you model it in the world to create a better world? Yes. That's exactly it, because we are creators. So if we are able to, I mean, that's really what Gandhi says, right? Be the change that you wish to see in the world. If you're resolving a, a personal problems in your life, you would you would have the tools and the wisdoms and the knowledge to offer it to somebody else. Wow, that makes so much sense to me, Renit. Uh, and yet, I... I wonder if that's if people get that, you know, that that my that the problems that we're experiencing aren't just our problems. What you just said to me, I what I heard was um, if we if I can resolve, if I can well, like I just completed a divorce I shared with you and in the resolution of it, which felt like totally my problem, my stuff and I was slogging through it. Now I'm beginning to see that there's an opportunity where I could be of service to other people going through that process in a way that um, could help them or support them in in resolution and completion that I had to slog through myself and most people do. 
But it's interesting because I don't know that people see that whatever whatever problem I just got through is something that I can help other people do. Well, that's the whole idea of, you know, I call I call it, it actually steps number seven because it's the higher steps. It's awakening of empathy. Once we start to re- once mm. we walk through that pain and suffering, we start to become more compassionate because we start seeing other people suffering. On the only when we actually get when we actually experience it right. ourselves so the more we start to become aware of that suffering the more we're able to do something about it maybe just hold your hand and say oh i'm so sorry you're feeling that way and it's a good way to share the experience and compassion with you but there is much more that you can do there is there is many ways that you can express your um your empathy and and the more you become more aware of your greatness and the more you feel like empowered by the wisdom and and this and the knowledge that you found out the more you're able to get out and reach out to people who are suffering and get more awareness to that to the mm-hmm. pain of suffering mm-hmm. that created in your life mm-hmm. i like that uh, i appreciate that yeah, I really do. Uh, can we circle back for just a minute? Because of one course. of the things mm-hmm. that um, you spoke about was in this idea of reprogramming is the the process of grieving. But you also mm-hmm. associated it with the day with a day of judgment, which I had not. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I kind of like a couple of my brain cells went pop. I, I, I don't understand. So can we talk about that? Absolutely, yes. So the, but I understand the grieving process because if something dies, you got to grieve it, you know, whether it's a lifestyle or a relationship or a job or a loved one passes on, you got to grieve it. And a lot of people don't necessarily take the time for that grieving. And that was something that you did personally in your life when you were going through your process. Yes. You took yes. time. Yes, it, it, the universe is forcing you to take the time, whether you like it or not. Yeah, it it it, it could be by un, being unemployed. It could right. be through an illness, you know, long term illness. God forbid, cancer, and other, and that is a form of stagnant. That is a form of of taking the time to heal your wounds, your inner wounds. Not or just at that. least you have the opportunity to yeah. if you if you pay attention. Yes, and I myself, I, I experienced depression. I'm not ashamed of sharing it because I I'm I'm glad that I took the time off and uh, for the whole year and I was sitting home crying. I remember sitting in front of those um, very sad TV shows in order to to facilitate my own tears in crying. Oh and, my gosh, are you <laughs> smart to do that? <laughs> yes, I know, right? What else I can do? <laughs> really? But um, but the other thing I really did is I, I started writing a journal. And in the journal, I started to communicate my inner thought. And, and maybe even anger has something to do with that and releasing that anger and even thinking what's wrong with my life and how do I figure out what to do now and and um, why did I not fit in and all of that kind of questions but but when start when I start to communicate that what that was uh, the moment that really f- helped me to start stepping into the process of healing even though it wasn't necessarily communicating it with another person you were just having the conversation with, with yourself myself. By journaling, which I'm a big proponent of journaling. And I know there's lots of people that go, oh, I don't like to write. But boy, it it's so helpful, especially when you're working through some sort of a, a crisis or, or a depression. It's really helpful. I, I can also take you, I mean, I will take you now to step number five, even though you didn't okay. mention it, because it's an, it's about an inner inner um, conflict. And... Um, and when we, when I found in in the in the scriptures that each one of the masters had a conversation, dialogue with a higher entity, the, Jesus in the devil for forty days, and Muhammad with the angel of Gabriel in the Mount Hara for many years, and uh, Mara, Buddha with Mara, which is a devilish creature, and um, and Moses with the angel behind him, the burning bush. All of this event happened when, when they were completely by themselves, on in an isolated place, 
far away from people's uh, attention and people's um, influ- influence, in- influence, right. and they all communicate with the higher cre- uh, with the higher self through the um, the entity of of higher spirit, whether it's a, somebody like a devil that comes to challenge you or an angel that comes to help you. But that is exactly the form of inner communication that I have done with my journal. And that is exactly the form of inner communication that we all do in that process of being stagnant. Because without that, without resolving this co- inner conflict, we will not be able to move forward. Is that making any oh, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it makes a lot of sense. And I was just thinking of... Um, I was trying to access a quote I remember. It was something it was something about that life is about being dynamic. Oh, Ernest Holmes said this. Mm-hmm. Life is dynamic and uh and when we ca- reach places of stagnation, it's generally because life is we're resisting the divine urge or that inner push to be more than who we thought we were. Yes, it's it's basically uh, the way I see it is resisting our dharma because if we don't live uh, um, with alignment with our dharma, we start to create to experience this, those crises and and yeah yeah. So explain to everybody what dharma is, just in case people don't. Know. Um, the way I I like the the, the, the explanation from um, that I resonate with is a, it's really a state of being. It's our natural state of being. Is dharma. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because, you know, it, it's easier to see it in nature because we know that the bunny hops and the, and the bird or flies and, and, um, and the dogs are barking and, and that's their natural behave, uh, way of behaving. And, um, and it's not just about the behavior. It's also about the life choices. It's also about the lifestyle that we choose. So everything that we actually in, uh, come, um, come across with, it has to align with that, with that natural state of mind. So and, and and that's how we start to be uh, more at peace with when with, we're in alignment with in alignment with the truth of who we are. Yes. Yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 and I'm I'm giggling now because I I get that I comprehend that, but yet the the being in alignment with the truth of who who I am all the time doesn't it doesn't happen on a minute by minute basis. Some you know I mean I could go days with not being in alignment. You know. And just experiencing the chaos of my life, it, uh, you know. But then enough about me. So, <laughs> so then let's talk a bit about this idea of Judgment Day that you bring up in the book because it, it was a great explanation of this thing that I never, you know, resonated with that I read in the Bible one time mm-hmm. and went, all right, that doesn't make sense to me. Yes. Yeah, so the, the Judgment Day, um, it's really a symbol of a, of a self-judging process because we're taking the time off to judge ourselves. We are our own um, critic. You know, we, we're judging ourselves constantly. Um, but this, this is really a time out that we need to take in order to, to understand why we are in that place of of darkness, why we're grieving that the ending of something, something that didn't work for us, something that doesn't really uh, serving us anymore. So we need that t- peace and quiet time that, like I said, they, all the masters were in a remote place. There was no people around because nobody can influence them. They need to make a life changing decision so the judgment day the way you uh, bring it up in the book it isn't about god smiting me you know oh, no. it, the hand of god coming down and knocking me out it's although sometimes it can feel like that two by four hitting you upside the head but it is more about a, the self-reflection of of what what have i let go of and where do i choose to go from here yes that kind of a thing yes that I love that analogy. Yes, and and what happened is when after when you know after the storm, <laughs> the storm that that changing everything is uproot all the old value that no longer serving us. Then we can create something new, right? Mm-hmm. I don't exactly remember the quote um, from the Bible, but I don't. But it's really about you know once the, the, there is a there is a the, the the judgment day in the Bible. It's really and the ending of. Of, of everything, the, right? Of everything. You know, which is like, who wants to read about that? Exactly. It's like the who it's wants a to global in that? war. Yes. <laughs> but it's really the ending of 
the old you. And once you are, you are come with peace with that, then you can start cre- re- recreating your life. It's all about getting into the place of creating your life again. Can I read another quote from your book? Uh-huh. Walking in the Footstep of, of the Masters, <laughs> um, because it speaks to this. The, the fear of losing everything in order to make a radical change in our lives holds us back from living our truth. But in reality, the loss of an old and unhappy chapter in our lives is a beginning of a new and improved chapter. We should not focus on what we lose, but on our gain. I love that. When we are no longer uh, obligated to live by the old values, we gain freedom. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I would suggest we gain choice and perhaps even we gain more happiness. Yes, exactly it. When we start to to become more aware of of our truth, we be, we actually align ourselves to making more conscious choice to start living our truth every day of our life. And what can be more powerful than that? Yeah, I agree with you. You know, and I, as I was thinking, of, as I was reading your book, I was thinking, all right, so what are one of my core values that I live by that um, that I will not go back on and and one of them is integrity to myself I I mean it started out as integrity like never tell a lie because generally whenever I told a lie I would get bit in the butt (laughs) it would come back on me but now it's become integrity to myself to be honest and real with myself and if that means that I cannot be in relationship with you or with you then that's the way it is but I'm not gonna I'm not going to um uh, surrender my value of personal integrity for you or you know not you runny but you know this, <laughs> the, the, somebody else you know whoever's not in integrity I'm not going to bend that way because I have found and if when I do I don't feel right it doesn't feel good inside of me if I even if I move my integrity meter just a scooch it it doesn't feel right Yes, it's, 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 a, you pointed out exactly that, you know, being in the mindset of consciousness, it's, it helps us to make the choices that always, always going to support us. But when, once we start to undermine them, we're going to, to bring the chaos back. So we have to be very aware of that, of that guideline between, between, you know, what we value and, and how we can constantly making choice that that connect to that value and that's why it's so important to get more in touch with what you believe in and more in touch with with the value that you not just live believe in it's not just about believing it's more than just believing it's it's really must live by you must live by it yes so uh so this kind of goes back to what we were saying at the beginning of everything in that uh, if you experience, if when we experience conflict in our lives, when I experience, con- well, let's just talk about me. When I experience conflict in my life, that's a good sign that perhaps I'm not in alignment with my truth. Yes, something, someone, or something is reflecting to me that I'm slightly off center. I'm slightly out of alignment, and I need to reevaluate and get back into the alignment of the truth of who I am. Yes, that's exactly it. Because when we start recreating our life, it's not about creating with, uh, it's about creating with, with, with constantly awareness to where uh, our choices fit in that, that value, core value. So when you make the choice, you have to think, okay, so how is it translated with my relationship with others? How is it translated to the lifestyle that I chose? How is it translated to the people I want to hang out with? How is it translated to every choice that I make in my life? Everything needs to be aligned with that core value in order for you to recreate your life in in more um, conscious way. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. So the last part of the book, which is uh, about the um, awakening or the spiritual birth or the conversation with the higher self, what do you want to say about that? Because we've only got a couple minutes left. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Sorry, bring in two minutes. <laughs> so I, I, would, I would say that um, 
when we the, the rebirth basically means that you know up until the age of 40 I like to state 40 but it could be 30 it could be even 50 you know up until the age of 40 we are constantly in the in a, in a, in a marathon in life to go into college and make money and build our house and have family and 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 all of our life is centered around pleasing ourselves structuring ourselves and in fi- fixing our existing self and then when we are actually going through that phase of awakening we start realizing there is more into life that I want. I want not just to take care of myself, not just about taking, taking, taking. It's all about giving. It's all about how do I leave something behind? Because when our bodies exit this world, what stays on earth is our spirit work, is what really how we impacted impacted this world in our spirits. So what really is important to us and from that moment on is how do I make a difference? How do I leave my spiritual mark on that world? And that's when you are re- when you are rebirthing yourself and start to uh, getting awareness of the godlike, of the divinity part, um, the spark of the divinity within you to recreate not just your life but creating the better life for everyone around. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the important work, the most important work yes. that we have here. Yes. So. Um, the walking, walking. The book is called "Walking in the Footsteps of the Masters," and Ranit Gabai. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today and walking us through. Is there is there anything else that you just want to leave our listeners with before we uh, depart? Um, I would invite you also to check out my website and uh, get acquainted with everything else there. Um, I, can I mention yeah, it? Yeah, what, what is the website? It's ronitgabai.com. So let's spell it: R O N I T. G-A-B-A-Y dot com. Yes. Great. And is your book on Amazon? Yes, it is. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Some We're, of local stores as well. Okay. <laughs> uh, like the Granada bookstore in Santa Barbara. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Renit, I, I thank you again for honoring me. And thank you for the amazing work and research that you've done to uh, create this book. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful illustration of how to best live our lives. So with that, I'm just going to say, and so it is, namaste. Namaste. Namaste.